Yo, bro, who got you crying like that? <laughs> Part 2. Is it fat phobic to not be okay with people who are fat enough to be on my 1,000 pound life? Overly obese people is what you call it. In the fat liberation community, we would call it super fat or infinite fat. The short answer is yes, it's fat phobic. And I think you already know that because you're thinking about it. And that's great. You should be thinking about it and questioning that in yourself. We are trained to be fat phobic, especially towards people who are super fat. Those shows themselves train us to mock and view fat people as disgusting freaks of nature and view fatness itself as something that must be corrected and that is a moral failing. You said in your comment that you find me beautiful. While I am flattered, the fact that you find me beautiful, whether in your personal subjective opinion or by a societal standard of me being on the smaller end of fat, that doesn't make me any more deserving of love, respect, or fair treatment than someone who is super fat. the most conservative take that you have ever heard in your life ronald reagan could have said this himself and i, I know that video is like a joke but let me tell you why it's unironically one of my favorite videos in this account it epitomizes the culture that i've been trying to create on this account for so long firstly can we talk about how big it got like it's hard to ratio a bigger creator and i almost doubled her like the reason i like it so much is because me calling the take conservative is the punchline like that's the joke of the video there, i make no other remark and all of that was super intentional right there's a method that frederick douglas like to use in his speeches which i'm pretty well read on and at this point pretty well practiced in talked about this before but i'm gonna flesh it out more now in his speeches he didn't try to prove why black people deserved equal rights but rather he presumed it and acted like it was obvious so the white people in a crowd who like disagreed with his premise just felt like they were behind like their point wasn't even legitimate enough to address it ultimately caused a lot of them to change their mind it's that that i've always tried to emulate on my account in the very beginning and that video that i stitched shows it perfectly instead of getting comments like what's wrong with it being a conservative Take. I was getting comments like, oh, I thought the point was right. Can someone explain to me why it's wrong? Did someone catch me up, right? They felt like they were behind. And this is where y'all come in. Y'all were in the replies, right? Having the discourse with them. There's a method to this. You're telling me that the woman who got Emmett Till killed is still alive? Where she live at? Where's where she live? I just want I ain't that one. Don't worry about what it was. I just want to talk to her. I just want to answer a few questions. Who do I need to fuck to dismantle capitalism around here? Okay, because I'm not afraid to do it. Both Megan and Cardi taught me how, so I'll be good. There is absolutely no reason why Hurricane Ida should have done that much damage to Louisiana and Mississippi and along the path that it's going to take. And part of the reason why is because there is infrastructural and environmental racism in a lot of minority and low socioeconomic communities. There's no reason that the southern border of Louisiana should still be struggling to figure out what type of infrastructure and technology they can use to prevent minority communities from being destroyed. And on top of that, not just being destroyed, but also having to put in their own resources to rebuild their own community. Like, wake up and smell the flowers, people, okay? There is race embedded into every decision in the United States of America. And the sooner that we realize that, the sooner we can stop people from dying because of things that could have been prevented. I can't take it anymore. I just want to die. We all want to die. We're me seeks. Why did you even rope me into this? Because he roped me into this. Well, the him over there, he roped me into this. Well, he roped me into this. Well, what about me? He, he roped me into this. Well, that one over there roped me into this. Well, he roped me into this. Uh, 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 luckily, I have a good alibi because I was in North Carolina and won. And if you've ever been curious about these pronouns, this video is also for you. My friend is so cool to come to my party. It's exciting to get to know it better. It's drinking a raspberry tea, which I've heard is its favorite. If you want to get it a refill, it's using the mason jar. It didn't have to dress itself up for my party, but it looks great, so I'm not mad. It should be really proud of itself for trying on these new pronouns. I know I'm proud of it. Walk in the club and fuck it up. Ouch, paper cut, for four hours, stand it up. Wake up and no man, arch it up. To get to do what you do this way. Don't you hate it when you're at work and you do a racist gesture and you totally forget that your job is actually to play international sports and the entire world is watching you and then you do this like racist gesture and then people are getting really offended by it and you're like, oh my god, it was just like one isolated incident with one isolated player, but it actually wasn't. It was actually the whole fucking team and they've done it multiple times before.
and then all of a sudden people are getting offended by something they should absolutely be offended by and you're like oh my god it wasn't that big of a deal don't blow it out of proportion like we're kind of sorry but we're not because i think you guys are totally overreacting and then we tried gaslighting you by saying that it's, it's not that big of a deal and like they didn't mean anything by it and they were actually trying to show respect which is a total fucking lie nice sportsmanship serbia yes i know you're 10 years old but you're so old Sexuality, I choke up and joke that the answer's not easy Like I'm watching a Disney movie and the couple gets it on But who should I look at? Is it Shang or Mulan? I like boys and girls but I still don't know why I couldn't get either one if I really tried Switching my preference like an on and off switch If I had a dime for every crush I've had, I'd be rich one time in college, someone I knew asked if I was pro-life or pro-choice, and I said pro-choice, and their response for why they're pro-life was literally the funniest thing I've ever heard. Um, but they said, yeah, I get that, but my dad is a lawyer, and sometimes he has to be okay with abortions, even though he's not, and it goes against his religious beliefs, and he just gets so sad, which in turn makes me so sad, because I just hate seeing him like that. And I was like, well, that's actually crazy, because this whole time I was thinking about the woman, you know, and how hard of a choice it was for her to get an abortion. But I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about the rich old white men, you know, and just how hard it is for them. So I guess all I'm saying is just hug your white dads today because it's so hard for them, you know? Damn bitch, you are racist AF. Ew, a Trumpy! Anyways, a cab. Charity is a relationship of power. The history of charity and of the development of what we now sometimes call the third sector, nonprofits, non governmental organizations, NGOs, or in the United States, 501c3s, is the history of the powerful distracting from their power by giving back to the less fortunate. This relationship has created a trap for today's nonprofit workers who enter a field hoping to do good while also making a living, one that has been shaped by the fact that for centuries, it was performed by people who didn't need a wage. Like other caring fields, nonprofit work was structured as women's work. In this case, work for wealthy women looking for something to do with their time. And that expectation continues to configure the work that people do in this sector. The charitable ethic is based on hierarchy and dependency on the part of the recipient. It responds only to immediate material needs and relocates collective concerns into a realm of private benevolence. In other words, charity is necessarily asymmetrical and reproduces inequalities. The problems of today's nonprofit sector are outgrowths of this necessary inequality. Nonprofits exist to try to mitigate the worst effects of an unequal distribution of wealth and power, yet they are funded with the leftovers of the very exploitation the nonprofits may be trying to combat. Nonprofit work, then, is also caring work, also service work privatized on the one hand, unlike public school teaching, but supposedly not in service of the profit motive. Nonprofits are not, despite their supposed lack of interest in profit, exceptions to the capitalist system, but embedded in it, necessary to its continued existence. So while I was pretending to be a boy, I dated this girl, so we looked like a straight couple, right? But now I'm woman adjacent, and I'm starting to figure out I think she is a lesbian in denial. So I need her to realize that she's a lesbian so we can date again as lesbians. Gender is a cultural construct, specifically a culturally constructed caste system designed to oppress women and benefit men. Woman is not a feeling. I don't feel like in anything. It's a social class determined by your material condition in a patriarchal society. Cis women have their reproductive organs regulated by government legislation with abortion bans and birth control restrictions. Both cis and trans women are systemically raped, sex trafficked, fetishized in porn, and abused by their male partners. Men, on the other hand, literally run the fucking world. They own the vast majority of wealth, land, industries, enterprises, and political power. The reason men commit crimes like rape and domestic violence on a structural level is not because of their DNA, but because of gendered socialization. And it's important for women to examine the ways that we've been socialized as well. Why do we feel ugly when we don't wear makeup or shave? Why do we fake orgasms during sex, prioritizing our partner's ego over our own comfort or pleasure? Why do we constantly apologize for just existing? 
We need to stop socializing people into the roles of men and women, which are inherently patriarchal, and instead allow people to live as individuals and form their own self-expression. Feminism should be about gender abolition. We talk a lot on this page about fat oppression, and while the fact that I, a fat person, am sharing my own lived experience and that should be enough, let's bring some research into the mix. Coming in hot, we've got this little beauty. First, please just pause this page and read the whole thing. Starting with employment, fat people are less likely to get the jobs and promotions they are qualified for, and they make less money than their thin counterparts across the board for doing the exact same work. Fat people are denied health insurance and medical care, they frequently experience medical malpractice and medical negligence, and they just generally receive a far lower quality of medical care across the board. If you are a fat student, it is likely that you will be graded more harshly than your thin peers, and if you're a fat teacher, it is less likely that you will be respected. This one can be summarized as just treating fat people like shit, obviously. And if you still think fat oppression is bullshit, hop on over to Harvard's Implicit Attitudes Test and take their one on fatness. A red wine.